Okay, now we will move on to the raw material up to the dissection of the blast furnace and in the raw material we would be dealing with the iron ore, coke and lime. So, mostly about the iron ore and coke. So, iron ore it is an iron bearing mineral associated with other gang materials generally silica and alumina some magnesia and others are there. It also contains a very small amount less than 1 percent uh, other element zinc, copper, titanium, chromium, magnesium, antimony, lead, tin, nickel, vanadium, sodium, potassium, sulfur and phosphorus. As we discussed uh, the sodium, potassium they are quite harmful uh, and mostly the phosphorus goes uh, into the metal and sulfur also some amount goes. In order to produce iron economically with maximum produ productivity the blast furnace burden must have certain quality. So, for iron ore to become a feed to blast furnace it should have following quality one is the good reducibility which means that it should be uh, have a good indirect uh, reduction which lowers the coke consumption. So, this is very important. So, good reducibility it should have narrow size distribution and good size range. So, when we say go, uh, good size range usually it is uh, between the uh, 10 to 50 mm and it is preferably it should have a very narrow size range maybe 80 percent of it should be around of 40 mm or so. So, that ensures the good permeability of the bed. So, both things are very important uh, because that is directly affect the productivity and the efficiency of the blast furnace. Then the strength of the ore should have a good resistance to abrasion and should have high crushing strength. So, these two are very important um, having a good resistance and um, good crushing strength and range of softening melting temperature it should be narrower and softening melting should occur at high temperature which reduces the semi fused mass that is cohesive zone in the blast furnace. So, for iron ore it is between 700 to 1350 degree Celsius and for sinter pellet it is between 1000 to 1350 degree Celsius and for sinter pellet it is between 1000 to 1350 degree Celsius and the another one is iron gang and moisture content. Obviously, iron content should be high in the ore with less gang material for higher productivity of the blast furnace. Moisture content must be low as it increases thermal load and thus the fuel rate in blast furnace. Very less moisture in the ore may lead to handling and dust problem. Now, when we talk about the all these properties when we said strength <coughs> good resistance and abrasion usually the natural ore they are not very good resistance uh, they do not have a very good strength and resistance to abrasion um, and that is why nowadays the practice is people do not use uh, natural ore um, that much or in the high percentage as a feed to blast furnace. Similarly, as you can see in the second point softening melting point is uh, for the natural ore lumpy ore it is between 700 to 1350 degree Celsius and again this is not acceptable in the modern blast furnace because it uh, uh, gives a uh, high resistance to the permeability of the gases and this increases the massage on very uh, high in the blast furnace. So, which uh, really decreases the productivity and does not give a smooth operation to the blast furnace. 
So, again natural or are not that much preferred in bulk as a feed in the blast furnace. Um, same thing is true about the uh, iron gang and moisture content. If it is uh, quite a lot gang material then volume uh, of the slag increases and the coke consumption also increases uh, and it should have a less moisture content. But these two points are very critical uh, operating the blast furnace at 100 percent lump ore. So, common iron ore are hematite and, uh, which has about 70 percent carbon, then magnetite, limonite, siderite and pyrites. <coughs> so, pyrite is the one which has uh, uh, sulphur associated with it. Um, so, these are the quite common iron ore and because when you do the um, mining of this iron ore lots of fines are generated. So, usually you make the pellet. So, swelling and volume change. So, some pellets and ore even the ore swell under reducing atmosphere leading to loss of strength generating fines and decreasing compaction strength. So, the blast furnace operation becomes difficult under these conditions. At, uh, uh, in this figure you can see these are the green pellets and these are after the reduction and you can see the cracking and disintegration swelling of the pellet has occurred which is not acceptable uh, as a feed in the blast furnace because that will create um, permeability and other problem uh, in the blast furnace. And same thing is true for the uh, lumpy iron ore. So, uh, swelling should be minimal and these are sort of the requirement uh, of the iron ore or sinter or pellets as a feed material to the blast furnace. In order to um, know about this uh, uh, properties many tests has been uh, sort of uh, devices and which we will see in the following slides. But befo before that the run of mines when you do the mining uh, after blasting the blast furnace generates more than 50 percent fines and which is about uh, uh, less than 10 millimeter in size which means this cannot be feed uh, directly to the blast furnace. Um, so, these fines undergoes agglomeration uh, like uh, pellet making pellets or center to make them suitable as blast furnace feed. We would be talking about agglomeration later uh, how do they make it. So, in order to have the above mentioned quality the iron ore from runoff mines undergoes to the beneficiation which involves many unit operation like crushing, grinding, screening, magnetic separation, flotation, washing, blending, agglomeration etcetera. So, this table shows um, the available ore which is there and what are the required quality for that and what you have to do to reach that required quality of the ore, the processing needed. So, from the run of mines iron ore may vary from fine powder to several, several hundred centimeter size. So, naturally you need a lumpy natural ore. So, what you need? You have to screen it, crush it to get the right size or may be lean with high percentage of gang and low percentage of iron. But what you need? A lumpy with uniform composition, porosity and chemical responses. So, essentially it goes under agglomeration either pelletization or sintering or may be bad having a lot moisture. What you need? Low swelling characteristic for that. So, the entire ore is crushed and ground and then agglomerated. 
if the ore may have a carbonate or hydroxide and what you need is sufficient strength for handling as well as during the reduction. So, beneficiation like washing, magnetic concentration, jigging etcetera is carried out before this can be used for as a blast furnace feed. Similarly, about the oxygen associated with iron oxide may be considered as gain. So, what you need a drying operation to get to dry uh, material. This few slide will tell you about these operation. The this one tells the iron ore production in the world. So, as you can see uh, most of the production is in China. So, that is uh, more than 600 million ton per annum according to 2013 figure. India between 100 to 600 million ton per annum. So, India and then Russia and uh, Australia they are into or uh, this category Africa um, not actually the uh, Latin American and then other other countries which are below that. So, that shows uh, um, India is having a very high iron ore production. Um, this shows the view of uh, iron ore mines essentially the hematite one and you can see how the iron ore um, are mined and taken away from there to processing plant. I think the, um, this figure shows magnetic separation of iron ore you can see how it is a low mag uh, intensity magnetic separator. So, ore is attached to it and you separate that one and make it concentrate. So, so this is magnetic separation sometimes you also apply the flotation. So, this is the flotation cell by which you um, increase the concentration in of the mag uh, hematite so the, or remove other impurities. So, this is a flotation cell which is used and this is a beneficiation plant at the mine site in western Australia where you can see it is getting upgraded the iron ore after mining immediately at the plant site being upgraded. And this tells a little uh, 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 about the availability of iron ore in India. So, mostly it is in the eastern region which is divided in the seven, uh, five zones. So, zone A where you have a Normandy, Kriburu, Bolani, Goa, uh, uh, the iron ore is available and then in the John V, Rao Ghat, Mahamaya, those are the places. Then in John C, John D, you have even John D is a little western side, Goa. And then here also the Kumar Swami and E V range. And then in John E, you have a Kudramukh and other places. So, these are the major places in India where iron ore is mined. And this is a typical view of the iron ore mines in India, which is owned by Steel Authority of India Limited, Shell. So, when we talked about the quality of uh, iron ore, which means we need many sort of tests to make sure uh, you can get the right quality. So, one of the tests and this is applicable almost for most of the raw material, uh, coke has a little different test, we will come to that. So, ore, sinter and pellets, so reducibility test. So, it is the ease of removing oxygen associated with iron. So, many tests are available like isothermal and non isothermal test. So, we are not going much into the detail of this, but uh, the, these tests are mentioned here Linder, CNRM, SIVA, these all are used for reducibility uh, test. Then about the cold strength which is mostly for resistance to abrasion and strength of the material 
uh, to test these. So, some of them are like tumbler test, drum test or setter test due to impact and compression test. So, all these tests are important to know the strength of the material. Um, then the porosity test also come into the picture, how porous is the ore or sinter um, which is necessary and this pore may have an internal pore and uh, outer one. So, all these becomes important uh, in order to understand the permeability of the blast furnace. Decrepitation it occurs due to the internal pressure developed from moisture evaporation, chemically bonded water or sudden heating and expansion. Due to with the pellet even ore they go under decrepitation. So, uh, which generate dust and fines. So, th it is necessary uh, to have the test to make sure it has a very low decrepitation. Then you have a low temperature breakdown. Um, so, for this you have a BISRA or LTVT low temperature test uh, because that makes your uh, pellet or sinter or, or iron or it does not break down uh, during reduction at low temperature and otherwise it will create the permeability problem again and dust problem. Hot compression is strength um, this is necessary especially for the pellet because uh, when very high blast furnace 30 meter high. So, lots of very high load is there and the pellet should be able to withstand that sort of uh, load. So, compression strength is tested for the pellet. Softening test is again very important to uh, which usually should be at higher temperature. So, for that one is CNRM test uh, is done under loading and uh, different heating road, uh, rate. Then swelling is another parameter especially pellets or even iron ore. Uh, so, for that one you need a dilatometer test which uh, <coughs> measure, measured about the swelling. High temperature bed permeability. So, that is a burger test. So, at high temperature uh, when fusion is occurring or semi solid mass is uh, uh, happening which reduces the permeability. So, it is very necessary at what temperature range this is happening. So, proper care uh, in the blast when it can be taken with respect to the gas flow of permeability. So, the burden requirement along with the key phenomena in various zones of blast furnace actually is uh, summarized in this table. So, if you look at the and the <coughs> lumpy zone or the upper zone in one way that is uh, near this throat and stake region what we described in the first lecture. So, from stoke line to the furnace of the cohesive zone. Um, so, main phenomena which are occurring here drying and preheating indirect redu reduction of iron ore and carbon solution loss. So, operator condition permeable burden and even gas distribution to favor indirect reduction. So, quality requirement appropriate size distribution resistance to breakdown during charging and, and resistance to decrepitation resistance to disintegration due to low temperature reduction and high reducibility. So, these all are quite a good requirement uh, up to the stake zone. So, uh, so, size distribution and mean particle size, tumbler and abrasion index which uh, uh, is used for the resistance to breakdown, decrypitation index, low temperature reduction integration index, reducibility, cold crushing strength and swelling index. So, these are the tests which we have already described in the previous uh, slides. So, these are the one which are needed in this zone to uh, make sure these qualities are met uh, up to the stake zone. In the cohesive zone as you know it is start softening and ma uh, ma uh, softening of the material in this zone and towards the end of the uh, cohesive zone it is uh, start melting and uh, dripping. 
So, mostly the indirect uh, uh, reduction and some direct reduction takes place in this. So, what you need? You need a as narrow as possible this cohesive zone. So, the quality for that high softening temperature, low dripping temperature and these are the test softening temperature, dripping temperature, width of cohesive zone as value. These are the tests which are done for the raw material to make sure um, it is quite narrow and more high temperature. And the lower part of the blast furnace where everything is in uh, uh, liquid state except the coke. Uh, so, this is below the cohesive zone where raceway and tear uh, and hearth is there. So, coal and coke combustion in the raceway, gas metal and slag drops and gas coke reaction, molten iron coke, molten slag coke, uh, these reaction occurs in this region. So, what you need a good slag chemistry, good slag fluidity, low viscosity. So, chemistry of ferrous material is to control the impurities such as phosphorus, sulfur, alumina, titanium oxide, even silica also comes here in this. So, these are the um, major, uh, these are the requirement for the any material or any feed we for the blast furnace should satisfy this one. So, these are the tests you do it to make sure it is suitable as a blast furnace feed. So, typical values of the tests uh, lie when you said about the tumbler index uh, for uh, strength and that other for lump ore a natural one it's in this range for pellet and sinter and different similarly abrasion index then cold crushing strength um, then you have a precipitation uh, reduction disintegration reducibility index and swelling index. These are the typical values uh, which uh, uh, are needed for the blast furnace burden material and one should make sure uh, after the test they are falling within this range. Next we come to the raw materials coke another uh, major constituent of the uh, feed uh, material in blast furnace. So, iron ore then the coke. So, coke plays mostly the four part in the blast furnace as a reductant to iron ore, as a fuel to provide the necessary heat, as a support to the burden and provide the required permeability for gases and liquid flow. For carburizing the metal and lowering its melting point. So, remember SS iron has a very high melting point more than 1500 degrees Celsius, but due to this carburization uh, of the metal and other impurities it uh, goes down up to 1200 or so where it can melt. So, this is a very important role this carbon plays. Similarly, um, because the height of the blast furnace are increasing, you need a very um, good strength coke and which can provide the permeability it does not crush under that high load. So, it really provides the support to the burden and of course, it acts as a fuel near the raceway at the tube level which is uh, uh, where it burns and as a deductant. So, coke accounts for about 60 percent of the total cost of the producing the hot metal. So, you can imagine how much uh, percentage of um, cost is associated with the coke production and because so it is very important to have a good quality coke because without that you cannot produce a good quality pig iron and the high productivity you cannot reach. So, we will talk more about uh, little coke making. So, coke production is an integral part of iron and steel plant using blast furnace and basic oxygen furnace route which acts as reductant 
energy source and providing support to the warden in a blast furnace. In modern blast furnace consumption is around 3000 kg per ton of hot metals. It used to be uh, six decade ago almost 900 to 1000 kg per ton of hot metal. So, one can see how much progress has been made in this area where this has been reduced almost one third or less than that um, the consumption of coke. So, coke production accounts for around 10 percent of the energy demand in a blast furnace or and BOF plant. 1 percent increase in the S content of coke may increase the coke demand by 2 percent. So, this is an important factor for countries like India. So, India has a very high S content in the, co in the coal and that coal cannot be used directly to make the coke. So, usually uh, you do the beneficiation of the coal. So, most of the uh, coal mines in India are associated with the washing system washery where they try to reduce the S content as much as possible. So, Indian coke goes up to 25, 28 percent S while um, in the blast furnace it is required 10 percent or so. So, quite a lot of one has to remove and as you can see 1 percent increment in S coke demand increases by 2 percent. So, that is why in India most of the coke we also import from other countries. Coke preparation. So, it the coke is produced by heating uh, the coking coal. So, naturally when we said about the as percent and uh, uh, and other thing which means all the coal are not suitable for the uh, ma or for making coke. So, the coal which are suitable to make the coke are known as coking coal. So, this is that is why coke is produced he by heating the coking coal in absence of air between 1000 and 1200 degrees Celsius in coke oven where it drives off the volatile compound and moisture. Coal decomposes uh, around 475 degrees Celsius and it forms plastic layer. It becomes also a bit fluid uh, sort of thing. So, it forms plastic layer, higher temperature bring release of tar and aromatic hydrocarbons and coke shrinks and destabilizes at temperature between 600 and 1100 degrees Celsius. So, this facilitate to join the carbon particles to form a porous cellular strong mass known as coke. This is very important. So, cellular strong porous mass is formed. The coking process lasts 15 to 18 hours to make the blast furnace coke and this process is called carbonization in the overall. This finished incandescent coke is pushed through the open battery door and rapidly quenched in wet or dry process, crushed and screened and it is then uh, sent to the of course, blast furnace as a feed. So, until 1950 the value of these byproduct which you are getting tar, aromatic hydrocarbons all these things exceeded that of the coke. So, um, a coke uh, oven uh, they were uh, really making quite a lot money uh, by from this by product. However, the advent of petroleum refining had driven the prices of these chemical to such a low level that today the coke oven by product in plant is merely a very costly pollution control device. In fact, due to this the problem is arising nowadays how to control the pollution and coke ma making is the main irritant in the 
whole integrated plan towards the pollution. And that is why um, more and more pressure in the integrated plant to reduce the consumption of coke and that is how due to that pressure this consumption of coke has come down up to 3000 or 300 kg per ton of hot metal when it used to be around 900 or 1000. Uh, one of course this factor and that is also becoming quite expensive affair to produce the coke in this way. So, coke quality. So, coke quality depends upon coal quality as we discussed before not all coals can be converted to coke. The quality of coke directly affect the coke rate and the productivity of the blast furnace because this is the one which is giving the permeability to the material in the blast furnace through which gases uh, can escape and the heat and mass transfer can occur. If we do not have a good quality coke, it is very difficult to produce the good quality pig iron and with the high productivity. So, coal quality or the rank increases in the following order peat, lignite, bituminous, anthracite. Anthracite is the highest one which has a high rank and very high fixed carbon in it and low volatile material in this one. So, when you are selecting the coal usually there are some criteria to select that or you perform some test. So, one is about the chemical properties. So, you do proximate analysis. So, mostly in this one you determine the fixed carbon, volatile metal, matter and moisture content. Then another is the ultimate analysis and where you uh, do the determination of the elements uh, which are present in the coal like sulphur, phosphorus and so on. Rheological properties, this is uh, this, uh, mentioned during the uh, making uh, during the carbonization process that uh, coal undergoes uh, with various uh, form and once it becomes also fluid or plastic. So, those properties are also very important to know for the cooking process because that will affect the coking process and that will directly affect the quality of the coke. Dilatometric properties again uh, uh, when the coke start getting fusion and uh, gaseous product start coming up. So, it swells uh, and then it uh, exerts the pressure. So, these properties are very important uh, uh, to know how the coal is going to behave during coking. Uh, in order to take care about the coke oven design and other thing. Similarly, the agglomeration properties which is using by coking index one is that after finishing uh, all this uh, evaporation and other tar and other material how does it agglomerate and of course, the petrographic analysis which determines the coal ring, mineral composition and material makeup because based on that you select the coal uh, which could be suitable for the coking purpose. So, these are the uh, few tests which uh, one has to uh, look at it before selecting the co proper coal for the coking purpose.